Okay, continuing our passage. This is the speech that Aeneas gives to his comrades who have survived the shipwreck. What does he say? How is he going to inspire these troops? O oh, Sokii, neque enum ignari sumus ante malorum. O oh, pasic raviora, dabit deus his quoque finem. Okay, let's see. Well, O oh, Sokii, he's talking to them, of course. That's vocative. Hey, guys, what's he going to say to them? Before he actually says that part, he's going to describe himself and his comrades. Neque enum ignari sumus ante malorum. Sumus, of course, first person plural. We, we are not ignari. And the thing about ignari is that you are ignorant or unknowing of a genitive. So that's why malorum is genitive, because it goes with that adjective ignari. Neque enum ignari sumus ante malorum. And then he's going on some more. Not only did he call them sokii, but he also called them Pasi Graviora. Pasi, of course, comes from patior, which is a deponent verb. So this is the participle off of that. O oh, people having suffered, having endured. And since it is a participle, it can take a direct object, which of course is Graviora, neuter, accusative, plural, direct object of Pasi. Hey guys, oh really miserable guys, what's going on here? Now here's, here's where he encourages them. Dabit Deus, he's quoque finem. Okay, I'm pretty sure you can handle that. We have a standard verb. What tense is this verb with that bit there? Deus, nominative singular subject. He's ablative plural. I'm sorry, dative plural, indirect object with the verb dabit because the verb of giving expects an indirect object. Finem, of course, is your direct object. So if you're putting this in English word or, or easy word order, you would say, Deus dabit finem his. Okay. Vos et sicileam rabiam penitusque sonantis acestis scapulos. Vos et caeclopea saxa experti. Okay, this is a good stopping point. Notice we have the colon there and we've got two woses. Does anybody remember what that poetic device is? Hmm, ponder that. So woes could be nominative or accusative plural. We don't have enough information yet, so we're going to hold it to see if anything resolves that ambiguity. At doesn't cut it. Oh, here's one. This is an accusative. So if this is our accusative, we have that at. Do we have two accusatives here? No, we actually have an at. At. So this is both and. Notice this at is not joining woes and this other accusative. Penitusque sonantis acestis scapulos. Okay, now we know for sure that woes is not accusative because we have this accusative here and it is joined to sonantis scapulos. It is joined to this noun adjective here, right there. And we've got the verb acestis. So, acestis is the verb, notice that T-I-S ending, telling us that it's second person plural, which is why we know that woes is a subject. So, this is the subject, this is the verb, and your direct objects of that verb, acestis, are right here and right here. Penitus here is just an adverb. Woes et caeclopea saxa experti. Okay, woes again, we are following the pattern up here, so we will assume that this woes is also nominative. Notice we have the et, et, both, and, so apparently he's saying that you guys did this, both this, and you did this. Experti, we could assume an estus here, experti esses, estus, which would make this really convenient because experti is a deponent verb, Experior, and here is the direct object. So, he has said, you guys have done these things, now what? Revocate, ooh, imperative, revocate animos. Do this imperative verb to this direct object. 
And then we've got an accusative, my stum quae timorum, notice, noun, adjective pair here. And we have mitita, oh, another imperative. So now that he's cheered these guys up with his wonderful speech, he wants them to do these two things, revocate the animos and mitite the maestum timorum. And then he gets all hopeful on us. Forsan et hike ola memenisse you wabit. Okay, this is weird because all of a sudden we've got this T ending. Well, we didn't change subjects, did we? No, this is going to be used impersonally. It will help to do this infinitive. It will help to do this infinitive to these things. Here we have an adverb. It will help to do the infinitive to hike, which is accusative, so it's the direct object of meminisse. Meminisse is a funky verb. You should look that up because it has, I don't remember, I don't think it has a present infinitive. I think that's just the way the infinitive looks on that one. It's kind of weird, so check that out in your dictionary. Again, he has cheered up the guys with an imperative and imperative, and then he uses this impersonal verb with the infinitive and hike as the direct object of that.